welcome back, guys. I am Chet Nichols, a IFBB Pro and PC Judge, and I am a physique coach. And my wife, Natalie Nichols, here, who is also an IFBB Pro, NPC Judge, and Physique Coach. And this is our second part of our conversation with uh, Dr. Peter Fish. Fishing? Fishing? I'll get it yeah. right one of these days, man. I'll get it right one of these days. Huh? Yeah. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, what you do in prep outside of the gym because we got to remember prep is a lifestyle. It's not your whole life, but there are some things we can do outside of the gym that can have a good impact on our prep. So I'll turn it right over to you. What would be the first thing you want to tell people to do when it when it comes to doing things outside of the gym while they're in prep? Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, it, it's common for a lot of people when they're dieting for shows where they kind of just you know, pull themselves off and go into like slug mode where they don't live their life. They just kind of, they don't do anything. They stop doing things. They, they just sit around their house. Um, but I, I would actually argue it. I think it's important for people to continue living their life, continue to stay active, like whatever, activities you were doing at the start of prep, keep doing them throughout mm -hmm. prep. Um, because when you hold yourself off in your house and you don't move and, and your life becomes going to the gym and laying on your couch the rest of the day, um, you know, you're going to reduce energy expenditure. You're not going to mm -hmm. burn as many calories. And since you're not burning as many calories, your food's probably going to have to go lower than for you to lose. And then you're going to feel more tired and sluggish. And then you're not going to move. And it's like this downward spiral of mm -hmm. not eating, not moving. Um, not, you know, and, and not losing weight, you know, or, or really having to push harder to lose weight. And so, um, you know, you're, you're outside of the gym for 22, 23 hours a day, you know, you're only there for an hour or two. So what you do with 22, 23 hours matters. And doesn't mean we have to all have physical jobs. I mean, I, I sit on my butt for a lot of hours a day working, but just making that effort to do things, you know, so that you're, you're moving throughout the day. Um, you know, someone doing what, what I do for a, a living, you may end up, you know, or, or working a sedentary job from home, you may end up, uh, you know, only getting two or 3,000 steps a day if you didn't make mm -hmm. an effort to actually move, you know, and so, so just doing things to move and live life and, and just not be sedentary in a slug during prep can go a long ways towards keeping prep moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, we're not talking about people going out and going and doing a whole bunch of extra cardio. Yeah. You know, we're just talking about, you know, neat, your, your normal daily activity, yeah. you know, summer, wash your car, clean the house, mow the lawn, you know, go and do spring cleaning in the garage. I mean, I, I like that you said that because that's what we have a lot of, you know, our clients do. So just get out and move around. Not to mention, you're going to feel better. Just yeah. kind of get some blood moving around and get out and get some sun instead of yeah. just being kind of locked in your house all the time. Yeah. It, and that's, I think sometimes people take that to extreme where I should just train, eat, and sleep, train, eat, and sleep, and maybe a little bit more true in off season, but certainly not prep, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I would, you know, yeah, absolutely. I just keep living your life, you know, I, like, you know, if you norm, like you said, if you're normally, you normally mow your grass, you know, once a week, keep mowing your grass. If you're normally, you know, shoveling snow, if you're normally walking your dog, if you're normally going to the park with your kids, keep doing those things, you know, and, and yeah, getting outside, there's just, there's such a stress reduction component to it and a stress reduction component to just living life and trying to be normal. You know, a lot of times people will go places during prep. Um, this doesn't, you know, they go places during prep and, and like to like events and they just, You'll see them like sit in the corner, quiet by themselves. Like, try to act Hoodie like. Hoodie on, all yeah. slumped yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, try to like, you know, if you go to events and things, like, like talk to people, be normal. Like, you know, mm -hmm. what would you normally do? Like, you know, try to make it as normal as possible. Like, yeah, you, you know, if you, you're not gonna be able to, you know, you're still having to hit your macros, and and mm -hmm. you're, you're not maybe not gonna be able to eat what everyone else is eating if you're going to some event with food or something like that, but. Um, doesn't mean you can't hang out with everyone, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of times I'll, I'll hear people say, well, um, you know, they don't want to go to whatever event because of food, whatever, because they're dieting. I'm like, you know, you, you know, full, first off, you know, like we talked about in the other video, dieting should be the ex exception, not the norm. Like you should be dieting exactly. for yeah. less of the time than you're not. But, you know, if you're dieting, you know, you're dieting for a show, do what you got to do on the food side of things. But the important thing to keep in mind with a lot of these events is what you're going to remember 
years down the road isn't what everyone ate, you know? So, okay, I got to go to this birthday party at three weeks out from my show. I'm not going to be able to eat birthday cake or whatever else, you know, the pizza mm -hmm. they have there or whatever, you know, I, I need to have, uh, you know, I'm going to have to eat what I, I need to eat, but that doesn't mean I can't go and enjoy my time with people because, you know, when you look back like five years down the road, you're not going to remember, no one's going to really care. Like, Oh, I, that, you know, you didn't eat pizza there. They're, you're going to mm -hmm. remember like, Hey, I had a good time hanging out with everyone. Like, cause I mean, that, that's really the important thing, you know, is it, it isn't what you're eating while you're, you know, it's, it's that you spent time with people and that you're, you're living life and the connection. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you know, trying to be as normal as possible during prep and, and, you know, not just fooling yourself off, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, that, you know, I've had preps where I've done that before. So, I mean, I, but I, it's so much more enjoyable when you're, you're actually like just living, trying to live life just as you normally would. And, and that only is going to keep helping progress as well. Cause you're going to expend a few more calories. Can you keep mm -hmm. doing all of the stuff you would normally do? Yeah. So I, I just wanted to break that down for people who may not understand what you're talking about, energy expenditure and things like that. So just in kind of a dumbed it down terms, Basically, all the activity, if you used to hike twice a week or once a week and then you started prep and stop, those activities, mm -hmm. the calorie burn that you get from that is baked in to your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So for you to stop that, you've got to replace it with something else, either taking your calories down or adding in mm -hmm. some boring cardio in the gym. But why would you do that if you can still go out and live your life and hike with your friends or take your dogs up in the woods or whatever the things that you like to yeah. do, still do those things. And it's it's basically free cardio, you know, free energy burn because you're just being you. Mm, correct. So. Yeah. You know, and, and what I want to point out too is that uh, you mentioned steps, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm glad we have steps. You know, when I first started competing, we really didn't have things that count steps and whatnot. And a lot of times we'll tell our competitors, you know, we'll give them a cardio go. And of course, like you, we're cardio minimalist. We, we, we keep that as low as possible for as long as we can, but we'll give them a step go. And the step go is okay. If, you know, if you're not hitting your steps, whether it's a day off of work or whatever the case would be, then go out and do some of those extra activities to get your step count up and do something that's fun. Because let's not forget, there's a psychological aspect of being around people and, and then doing things you enjoy versus just sitting back and, you know, hovering in until the next day or your next meal or whatever the case would be. And I mean, prep is hard on the mind. Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard psychologically. So again, why would you take things away? It's just not smart, right? Yeah, and I, I would also say too, you know, a lot of times people complain about hunger during prep and, you know, obviously hunger is going to be there and they're, you know, mm -hmm. that's a the necessary take, evil. Yeah, you, you can take a side tangent for all the things you can do to try to, you know, keep it in check or whatever. But, you know, I think when it comes to just living life, if you're doing stuff rather than just laying around in your house, you, you stay active, you stay busy, you, you, you know what I mean? Like keep living life and you're not just sitting around waiting for Obsessing. your next meal. Yeah. Waiting for your next meal. Oh, I'm so hungry, whatever. You're, you're just living your life and you're, you're getting away from, you know what I mean? That, that just, mm -hmm. I don't know, that cycle of just laying around on your couch waiting to eat. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's somewhat distracting too. I know I, I used to do it all the time uh, before I got serious about my macros, but you would just forget to eat because you're busy and you just forget that you were hungry. So mm -hmm. you just keep on about your daily activities. Well, that can come in handy in prep when you're starving and all you're thinking about is food. If you get active and you're doing things and don't think about as much. Yeah. You're not sitting there watching the clock waiting until it's time for me to be able to have my next meal because I'm trying to spread it out. Just go and do things. Just live. Yeah, yeah exactly. So when you have this conversation with, with your folks, um, so what advice specifically do you give them? Do you ask them what they do on a daily basis? Do you ask them what they did in the off season? Do you kind of help put things in perspective and kind of plan it out a little bit what they do? Yeah. So I, I oftentimes will set step counts for people, um, especially if they work, if, you know, if they work an active job, maybe not always, but if, if they're working a more sedentary job, usually the first thing we look at is, well, you know, we're at right at the end of your off season, right at the start of your cut, you're still pretty much feeling normal, living as normal. What does normal look like? Like how many steps exactly. you have? Different for everybody. Yeah. 
And so then we just kind of aim for what their normal is, you know, and, and okay, so this is what we're aiming for. It's your normal. And then, you know, I'll, I'll use steps then also as a way it's based, you know, if they plateau, I might bump their steps up a little bit more. At that point, it's probably lists. It's like low intensity steady state, mm -hmm. kind of, but it's kind of like activity. I don't know what you want to classify it as. They're moving more, you know, so yeah. you're, you know, it, it, but either way, like we just start out with whatever they're doing, you know, and, and then we kind of work up from there. And yeah, I absolutely encourage them go do something fun, you know, get outside. Um, you know, even if you just get outside and go for a walk or something, you know, that there, there are just stress reduction benefits to being outside. And, um, you know, especially a lot of us work sedent or sedentary jobs inside all day. And so just getting outside can have a number of benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And for parents, that's a good thing that you can do to still have some time with your family and your kids mm -hmm. uh, during prep, you know. They, they love to take walks with you. You can just go walk around the neighborhood and then you're getting in your steps, but you're also, you know, your kids don't know you're doing it to get steps. But you're they just productive. going for a walk from, with mom or, you know. Yeah, and, they, and I mean, you go to the park with them, play with, you know, whatever. Like, it can yeah. be something, you have a dog, you know, go go for a walk with your dog. You know, your dog will yeah. appreciate it, you know. Like, yeah, it, it, there's all kinds of things you, you can do that are fun. I mean, and some not so fun, you know. It snows and you got to go shovel snow. Well, if that's what you're normally doing, then go shovel your snow like you know like, yeah uh, exactly exactly your life like you normally would any other time mm -hmm. so any final thoughts on this one um i you know i think my biggest take home on this would just be you know whatever life looked like for you in the off season try to live that life as normally as possible throughout prep and, and i think it's going to have a lot of benefits i mean obviously in terms of energy expenditure Mm -hmm. um, and, and keeping that up, but just psychological benefits and, and hunger management benefits and things as well. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, nobody, none of us make a living competing. Like we, we all have other things in life. Mm -hmm. um, competing isn't everything in life. It's, it's fun. It's, it's important to those of us who do it, but it's, you know, you, you still have other things in life, like, you know, pay attention to them as well during prep. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's a That's lifestyle. A it's not life. Exactly. All right, guys, so I hope you took some good stuff away from here. Once again, uh, we got uh, Peter with us, and we've got to throw it out there again. You know, the, the, the bodybuilding, the complete contest prep by uh, Peter and Cliff Wilson. Uh, look for it. Get it. We love this thing. So uh, thanks again for joining us again, and look for the next video, guys.